Today's video is on how to work with neodymium magnets. Some people also call them rare earth magnets. You can buy rare earth magnets uh, online uh, in a number of different sizes. You could probably buy them at some stores in your local area. But uh, learning how to work with them sometimes uh, is just really handy to understand their characteristics. Uh, as you can see here, I've got a number of different things that I've built with them. I primarily use them for magnetic wheels, either drive wheels or encoder wheels. We had a robot that actually operated on steel pipelines and they came in really handy for all sorts of things. But you can see here I've got a few different types and they love to stick to one another. This is just a really small little quarter inch and this is a one inch and I think this one's about a three eighths or three, three quarter or five eighths. But you'll notice on them that they come marked with a little red dot. That shows polarity on there. So you can find out, I can't remember right offhand whether they're all North Pole or all South Pole. But these magnets are magnetized through the magnet this way. So what I needed to do is to make them be magnetized more in the radial direction around this way. So what I found when I was doing my testing, when I was creating this wheel, is that a piece of steel that was placed on either side of the magnet that was essentially the thickness, the same thickness as the magnet on both sides, uh, gave me a full magnetic sat saturation of the steel and it transformed the magnetic field from through the magnet this way to radially around the magnet this way so that it could act as a wheel. So I'll show you what I did on a few of them. What I started out with was, where do I have it right here? It was a steel fender washer. So I would chuck two of them together in a lathe and I would turn them down so that I got both of the washers to the same thickness. Then what I would do is add magnets all the way around the perimeter. Now, if you have a one large magnet that sets right in the center, great, but you can still make them with a number of smaller magnets around the perimeter, like you see. These ones were rectangular. The ones that I actually made, like this one here, is actually made with a number of these magnets placed all around, as many as I could get all the way around. This style allowed me access so that I could actually drill some holes and mount this hub on the back side. This hub then, if you look at this one, this is how I built this. This is just a piece of one inch square stock, aluminum, and I drilled it so that I could put in two quarter inch flanged uh, bearings on both sides and that supported it so that it took up the radial load. This particular one will get a encoder uh, placed on the plate on this side and then there's a hub that attaches here. It makes it really, really strong. It can handle a heavy load. It works really well. Now, the other thing that I did also with these when I was making them is, I don't know if you can actually see it, but inside where the magnet is, I ran a bead of silicone inside also. It helps to hold the magnets in place so that they don't slide relative to one another. The other thing that it stops is a lot of the magnetic debris that gets on the wheel from getting way deep inside between all the magnets and really making a mess. So what you can do is if it gets a lot of magnetic debris on it, like this one, you can just rub it with your finger, pile it up into a bunch, you know, you can get it into one spot and then you can just pick it off and throw it away. It really helps to keep these things clean. Because when you're running them on a magnetic surface, any kind of steel surface, I should say, you're going to pick up little tiny steel shards. So that's essentially what I did with those. This one here was attached to an encoder so that as the wheel would run back and forth on the steel pipe, it would encode how far it went. So that's kind of what I did with those. These ones here... Again, the same way I used larger magnets like this guy, quite a few of them, as many as I could get inside. These, the wall thickness on this uh, steel plate on either side is quite a bit thicker. 
So you will get considerably more magnetic attraction with a wheel this size. These were just freewheeling ones uh, attached to a unit that you would just push along a steel surface. Hence, I, was, uh, I did have drive lugs uh, machined into it so that if I did need to put a, a, a pulley on the outside, I could. In this case, I didn't. It was just attached. Actually, it was attached onto a piece of aluminum channel like this, just with this type of a system. And then you could drive it along. Um, that's another one of them. Now, I'm going to show you the big one. Now, okay, there, there's a couple of things that you have to remember with this. One is the further the magnet gets away from its steel, from a steel object, the magnetic force drops exponentially. That means double the distance, quadruple the reduction in magnetic force. So what you, primarily what you want to do with a wheel is make sure that it's on the surface. That really helps. If you can't, you can still, you know, hover it as close to the surface as you possibly can. Uh, just making sure you remember that, you know, that magnetic attraction drop, drops exponentially. So what I'm going to do, oh, these are the cups. You can either have flat plate, like I showed you here, like this. There's no cup on it. In this case, this particular one had a cup so that the magnet was a half inch thick magnet goes inside these cups on both sides. Now, I'll show you the wheel. There, there will be a slight gap between because the, this, this uh, machine surface and this machine surface is not exactly half an inch. I wanted a slight gap in between so that I could actually pry them apart again. But like I say, these are extremely dangerous when you get to this size. This actual wheel uh, has 250 pounds of magnetic attraction to a piece of steel. It, it is really scary, really dangerous. So I'm just giving you a fair warning that when you're getting up to this size of magnet, it is really scary. These guys down here, two of these snapping together will actually remove skin. It'll pinch it so hard that you will not be able to get this apart and you will lose skin. So like I say, be really, really careful with them. The smaller they are and the more the number of them, the safer they are to work with. But just keep in mind, they're really, really dangerous. Uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover with this. This little guy, you can make them really small if you want to, like this one. It was just uh, put directly onto this encoder with a machined hub. The bushing inside the encoder would wear quite a bit. You get a lot of slop and it would become not as accurate. This one here uh, turned out to be considerably more accurate because, like I say, it's held both sides by bearings and there's no leaning or wobbling or anything with it. It's, it's really skookum. So I'm going to move all these out of the way because I'm really afraid that when I show you this big one that something could come flying at me. Now, this is it. So I'm going to bring it about that. I don't want to get it any closer than that. So if you see, I've put a HDD pulley on the side of it. I've embedded two bearings, uh, one in this, each of the, each of the cups, and then I've placed the two together and then you can put an axle through it. Now what I've normally, whoa, okay, that's scary. Look at that. It snapped this small magnet. Like I said, this is 250 pounds of pull on it. So it is really scary. Now, being that that was broken, you could still use it on one of the other wheels. You can actually just place it all the way around the perimeter. But like I say, it will drag it from a long distance away and it is really dangerous. So putting these together took some uh, ingenuity. I like to use stainless as much as possible. Stainless washers. This one is a uh, ferrous steel bolt, which is, you know, I just used it. But I do like to use stainless because it's a lot less scary when you're working with it. So anyways, if you're ever making a wheel or you wanted to play with these magnets, you know, just to give you a heads up on how they work and what the possibilities are, uh, I hope this helps and thanks for watching. Also, if you do like these videos, you know, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. It helps me make more videos and uh, all that good stuff. So thanks very much for watching.